All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Love the energy. Thank you all for joining us for this year's Honda Battle of the Bands. We are really excited to have you all here. My name is Derek Clifton of Flowers Communications Group, and I'll be moderating this morning's press junket with Yvette Hunziker, the Vice President of Corporate Social Responsibility and Inclusion, Diversity, and American Honda. And our special guests, we have Lonnie Love, who is hosting the HBOB live stream, and Ricky Smiley, who will serve as our in-stadium host for the live event. <laughs> note on how this morning's session is going to flow. We thank you all for submitting your questions in advance, those of you who were able, so that we can ensure that as many of them are answered as possible within the limited time we do have. We will start by asking the submitted questions, and then we'll open it up for a few questions from the floor. Now, during the open Q&A, please keep your questions focused on topic and on the Honda Battle of the Bands event. Please refrain from asking any off-topic or personal questions. We appreciate your understanding and your cooperation. And with that, we are going to go ahead and get started. So the first question is both for Lonnie and Ricky. Please tell us about your HBCU experience and what it means for you to be part of this event. Lonnie, I, we'll start with you. I'm excited, as you can tell. I am a former. I'm a former um, March and Storm Prairie View and University. I played French horn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to see this recognition today, to see Honda give this recognition to historically black colleges, especially during Black History Month, is awesome. I am so proud to be able to live stream this and to work with my partner, my brother, Ricky Smiley, is just even best. It, I, I, it's just the best. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. I'm always, um, I'm always trumpet, but I play French horn doing symphonic and jazz, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, here at the... Uh, history, uh, the historic day at Alabama State uh, University. So I'm, so I'm so excited about Battle of the Bands, and I just hope that uh, a lot of kids are watching and get uh, influenced and encouraged like I did, mm -hmm. you know, because I went to the classic every year, not just the classic, that's Alabama State, Alabama, Ed, and Birmingham every year uh, as a kid, so, uh, and I think it set a, a good tone in my life, so I'm so excited, and thank, uh, thank you, Honda, uh, uh, for supporting us, and uh, we're just excited to be here. All right, our next question is for Yvette. Why did Honda decide to develop a relationship with HBCUs? Well, first, why not? <laughs> why not? Um, when we were thinking about how to advance our relationship between the black community, um, as a core pillar of our sustainability strategy, it's education for our first choice with HBCUs. So that's how the relationship began. And we came up with the campus all star challenge. Yeah, we, we hot step. 
I was my I was my skinniest. I was, I was like, yes, okay. Yeah, everybody leave at the halftime. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that is the beauty of you know the historically black colleges and the, the band. But also, if you notice, people always emulate what we start. You know, I think there was a, um, a famous girl, she started a dance team at one of the California uh, PWIs because she saw what we were doing. We had the black foxes, honey. We, yes, we was like, and then the flag girls, and it's just, it's just a whole production. And this all started with historically black college marching bands. And we set our own tone, we did, we did not care, we give energy, we provide support, we, and it's just something that I think for a long time has been overlooked. And so I want to again thank Honda because this is something that needs to be sh sh shown a light. There are over 100 um, historically black colleges and universities. These are just six that you're going to see today, but hopefully you know, we can continue this to go on and on and on and showcase these wonderful uh, kids and, and see their spirit and their pride. Awesome. Our next question is for Yvette. What led to the decision to host this year's Honda Battle of the Bands at Alabama State University? Well, as you know, we've been in this for 20 years now. We have the 20th anniversary of the Honda Battle of the Bands. And due to the pandemic, you know, we had two years off. So we were having the conversations about, you know, how do we come back in 2023? And working with our HBC partners, we had this conversation. And what kept coming up is homecoming. Homecoming. And when I work with the team, we talked about, you know, what is that? What's homecoming? What better place to have a homecoming with the Battle of the Bands than on the HBCU campus? Mm -hmm. And then we talked about one campus, you know, this is all about celebrating the culture of black community. Yes. So here we are in Montgomery, the part of the civil rights movement. So that's why we're here. That's, that's why we're here. Yeah, and I'm glad that you guys are having it outside of the homecoming, because homecoming is a whole different animal. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. 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 yeah, but to have it now, especially during Black History That's Month, right. to shine a light and to shine a light on this wonderful university, yes. I think it's, it's the perfect timing, and it's, it's, it's the perfect day, and this is what's needed, so thank you. Thank you. Our next question, and Lonnie, we'll start with you. How are HBCU marching bands important entities for HBCU culture? Well, you know, for me, I was, I only joined the, the March Band because it paid me some money. <laughs> yeah, it paid me that book. That hundred dollars back then? That was money. That was a lot. Okay. But as far as the culture and how it, it helps, it just shows the beauty of us as black people and people of color. Um, it shows our creativity. It shows, you know, um, how different we are. There's something about drum beats, mm -hmm. you know, and the oh, African yeah, drum beats. Absolutely. It's yeah. just, it's something that is, you cannot deny. When you hear those drums and you see those drum majors and you just, we all, the whole students <laughs> think it was going to be electric. You know what I mean? So that is the beauty of it. This is our part of our culture. It goes back from us being from the motherland, hearing those drums, getting yes. that beat and understanding, like, you know, we don't need no sheet music. You know this with, with sheet music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, a lot of times uh, we couldn't afford the sheet music. Yeah. So uh, there was a couple of times where I sat at the piano and did the flutes and did the clarinets and then the saxophone and then the, uh, the, t the alto saxophone, the tenor saxophone. The trumpet, the trombone, and then I would let the percussion figure theirs out or whatever because we couldn't afford sheet because we yep. didn't have any money. And then I would go make copies and go in the bathroom and teach it mm -hmm. or whatever. So, because it was very expensive or whatever. But uh, yeah, nah, they can't pay for your books. <laughs> Marshall Bay, you get your books paid for it. So, yeah. But, but Lonnie said everything, but I was going to say that's perfect and definitely on point. Yeah. <laughs> So, what can we expect at this year's Honda Battle of Bands Invitational Showcase? Would you like to answer first? Go ahead. Or Rick, you go ahead. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We just did a rehearsal, so I'm really excited about it. I like the script. We got Lenny up there in the booth <laughs> doing her thing, talking to the virtual audience. And, uh, and this is one of the best in the game. Uh, first of all, one of the funniest comedians in the country. Big round of applause. <laughs> 
we go, we go way back. We go, we go back like old Cadillac seats. Remember, uh, uh, you remember Obama? Remember? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we was in the old, remember, yes. Right. Was it your birthday? It was his birthday. It was, it was his President birthday. Obama's yeah. birthday. Mm -hmm. And we sitting up here in the, you know, in the Roosevelt room. Yeah. And our President Obama was like, okay, who wants to hang out in the Oval Office? She gonna be here talking about, oh! Oh, man! Oh, man, you gonna get us kicked out. And we went to the Oval Office and hung out for about a good 30, 40, like, we yeah. kicked it. Yeah. It yeah. was funny, I, uh, Reverend Al, uh -huh. uh, we had a great time. That was a great experience to be with my sister. Uh, and I still have a picture. Get your picture. Yeah, yeah I got a picture. <laughs> <laughs> we had to brag about that because that was a moment. You in yeah. the White House was the first black president of the United States, and you in the Oval Office. I asked President Obama. I know this off topic. <laughs> I didn't take no We've seen each other so long. Yeah, yeah. We, we always get excited. I said, President Obama, walk me over to the window where you make most of your decisions. And, and he showed me what most, he walked me over to that particular window that presidents stand when they make like world decisions. It was just so exciting. Yeah. But uh, thank you for reminding me of that. We got about that. That was that's, that that's was a awesome. Black History moment. So that goes in with you. What was the question? <laughs> 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 we went outside after we were done with the meeting. This is the last one. After we were done with the meeting, and this stuff, we had started having like a prayer. It was like, you really?
right, we now have time for just a few questions. And when you are called upon, if you could please share your name and the media outlet you represent before posing your question, we'd appreciate it. And please project, we apologize for having the microphone for the floor, but if you just you know, stand or sit as you're able and project, we will get you that question over to the panel. All right, we'll open it up. Do we stand up? You pick it somebody or we Yes. Let's start with the blue. Yeah. Uh, I hope you like my shirt all over the state university. <laughs> I'm Chanel, I'm Chanel Simone. I'm a media host and radio personality in Atlanta, Georgia. I represent Blue Hair, Blue Hair Podcast and also 94.7 The Lake Radio. So this is my question for both Ronnie and Ricky Smiley. So while HBCUs are receiving massive recognition, right? We got Conor Battle the Bands, Deion Sanders, you know, we got Beyonce Coachella, okay? But at the same time, there seems to be a lack of money. Okay. So we don't receive the funding or anything that we need. So my question is, going forward, do you think that HBCUs will be able to sustain in the future? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, uh, and, and for example, the things that uh, the attention that Coach Bryan has brought uh, to HBCUs, uh, and then now uh, you got people coming home like Eddie Rob, uh, you know, is, uh, is coaching here, and then you got uh, uh, what's his name over at Tennessee State. University uh, running back from Ohio State, Eddie George, um, whatever. So, you know, it's a lot of uh, attention coming to HBCUs, and I think you'll see more people. Uh, the, the interest is higher than I've ever seen it. So, I'm really excited about it. You know, HBCUs have been around for a long time, and uh, what we need is funding. We need funding from the alumni, but we also need funding from donors. And just like Prairie View received from Mackenzie Scott, $50 million. Um, this was uh, two years ago. Um, this is the reason why you have to give attention to things like the um, Honda Battle of the Bands, or you have to give attention to what Deion Sanders did, because that, that shines a light on HBCUs. And then when people see that HBCUs need more money, then they can get the appropriate funding. Um, you know, a lot of HBCUs are state funded. Get that money from the state. Just, it, it, there's like, there's ways to get funding. And we have to fight for that funding. It is important that, you know, like the state regions in Texas, there's a certain amount of funding that's supposed to go to all the colleges. So we have to be vocal about it, but we also have to realize too that, you know, a lot of this falls on the alumni, but there's a lot of people with a lot of money out there that if you just go to them, and like what we did with Mackenzie Scott, she knew the president of, of Prairie View at the time, Ruthie Simmons. She liked her, she liked what she did, and she gave that $50 million, no questions asked. There are a lot of people that's got money out there. We have to just approach them, and that way we can keep that funding, we can keep our, our, our institutions going. It's very, very important. And believe me, it will last because we got God. And God Ooh, believes amen. in this. And God will not let us down. Thank you. Thank you. All right. In the front. Hi, my name is Ashley, representing Radio 1 as well as Boston.com. And North State University, HBC Warren. But um, I wanted to ask you, and because of the partnership with Honda, how do we continue to um, have a line of appreciation versus appropriation? And I think we see that a lot when it comes to everyone that's having currently battle with bands and, and attaching their names to it. But Honda has done an excellent job of doing that for over 20 years. I participated in this as well. So this is such a full circle moment. So how do you continue, and with the support of like both of you, to make sure we're connecting with the right people and partnerships and companies to make sure we're doing that? Well, I think it's, it, it depends on who you have. Like with Honda, they were great partners to Ricky and myself. They allowed us to be part of this um, process to make this happen. That's what's in very, very important. You know, a lot of you know companies. You know how like with the whole Coach Prime thing, everybody started saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna help the HBCUs. We're gonna help it," and nobody helped. Everybody started dwindling away. With Honda, they didn't do that. They sought people that, like yourself who actually went to an HBCU, who understood the culture. 
And that's what you have to do. I just don't go with anybody. I don't go with any corporation just because, yeah, you know, the money. No, no, no. What are y'all doing? And when they told us the plan, we're like, well, this is going to be an awesome event. So it really starts with the alumni. It really starts with us, you know, not just letting these corporations use us because it's the flavor of the month. It's up to us to say, okay, what's happening? Can I be a partner? Can I have input? And that's what we did. And that's why this event is such a stellar event. And everybody is going to use this as the blueprint. Absolutely. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for one more question. KK side. <laughs> What's up, LJ? I didn't know that was you, baby. I just realized that was you, LJ. Hey, buddy. Oh, Lord. Who's on the mic with your boy, LJ? <laughs> All right. Our last question. Hey. Hey, how y'all doing? It's Angel from Showtown Talk, man, coming all the way from Texas. We a band podcast, and we just really got it off the ground. We're former band, uh, we're former band players as well. I'm Martin Texas Southern Ocean of Soul Platinum Phone Play 2 for 2016. Hey, okay. <laughs> so my question is, with Honda, I noticed it's always been in Atlanta for as long as I've known the event and with it being in Alabama State, I've noticed that we moved from Atlanta now. So is this gonna be a moving from a central location to a campus by campus basis like this year is Alabama State, but next year will be like Jackson or something. That's what we're actually talking about. And as Lonnie mentioned, we're trying to work with the HBC community understand what the next 30 is going to look like. So, yes, we're here today. Yeah, we were in Atlanta. Tomorrow, we're going to go with our HBC partners. So, stay tuned. Cool. All right. And with that, we have to wrap up and get ready for an exciting event today. So, let's thank Bonnie, Ricky, and